Good day, it's Friday, it's sportsstars.ie and yes, as you might have heard already during the week, we're mixing things up this week and this is Sports Stars Football, your weekly look at all things happening with the big ball or the oval ball as the case may be in Australia and for our AFL fans that do follow the show every week, our apologies that uh, you might be listening to this after the game between the Geelong Cats and the Richmond Tigers has taken place but we hope you enjoyed the game and I hope you enjoy our coverage later on. A lot to talk about this week and of course as I've said already but I'll say it again, thanks a million to everybody who supported the Sports Stars Football Team of the Year competition last week. We have picked 15 players, the team is up on our website sportsstars.ie and today on the show we will be picking our player of the year. When I say we'll be picking it, we'll be announcing it, it's you who picked it. All the votes over all three rounds put together to decide the player of the year we will be counting down from 25 to 1 but of course we won't be uh, doing it on, on my own I'm Darren Kelly I'm joined by four of the members of the Sports Stats Football Team of the Year Kerry's Kira Murphy Kildare's Roisin Byrne Limerick's Amy Ryan and Ross Commons Jenny Higgins will be with me later on to run through that and I can tell you right now one of them is the overall winner but who's in the 25 you have to stick with us to find out Joanne Doonan, who is a nominee for Junior Footballer of the Year, coming up this weekend. She's back with us later on in the show to preview Round 5 of the AFL Women's Series. There's supposed to be nine in total. Hopefully we get the full nine in and we're passing the halfway mark. And already four clubs look like they've fallen by the wayside. But then again, a couple of wins could put them back in the hunt. Who knows? So that's all to look forward to later on. But first, of course, we'll go through the news or some of the news that we've had in football during the week and let's start with that big event happening on TG Carr this Saturday we might have our team of the year but we support any team of the year and of course the official AIG TG Carr teams of the championship will be announced at quarter past seven tomorrow night at Saturday on TG Carr and we wish everybody the best of luck there are no nominees this year yes there's three nominees for player of the year in each of the categories and you have to feel that they are definitely going to get in but we will look forward to seeing but also um you will be you can be part of it because the so eight there's eight contenders for goal of the year cool Nablin, and you can vote for that uh, by going on to the tg car website at tgcar.ie forward slash aig and a vote for your favourite goal of the year. Some cracking contenders. I deliberately not mentioned any of them on the show because I don't want to be influencing the voting. But make sure you get a vote in on tgcar.ie forward slash AIG. Of course, Sports Stats Football is on Friday this week. It'll be the bonus podcast this week ahead of the uh, teams of the championship tomorrow night. Amy Mackin and Lindsay Davey were at the launch during the week. I had the pleasure of being invited virtually, of course. And I got to talk to both Lindsay Davey, former two-time, five-time All-Star, two-time Player of the Year nominee, and Amy Mackin. What a return she's had. Looks like she's going to win her third All-Star. Could she become Armagh's second player of the year? Well, she is nominated for the Senior Award, along with Dublin pair Carla Rowe and Sinead Goldrick. If you haven't seen that podcast, go to sportsstyles.ie right now and check it out. It's the Curtain Razor. It was on on Wednesday. What else is going on? Well, Evan Talty is the new Clare Senior Ladies Football Manager. We would have told you that before. And Clare LGFA are having a coaching webinar on next Wednesday, the 3rd of March. And they have a stellar lineup for this. They have Mick Bowen, the Dublin manager. They have Valerie Mulcahy, the multi all Ireland winning player with Cork and current manager of Ballyboden St. Indus in Dublin. And they have Evan Talty, the Clare manager too. Uh, look, you, you will rarely ever get an opportunity to get three experienced uh, footballers uh, together to offer their insight into the game. You can register by going on to any of the Clare Ladies Football social media pages and get a registration form. That is next Wednesday 
can't remember the time of hand. I think it's seven or half seven. But either way, check Clear uh, Football uh, social media pages and they will give you the full details. I'm going to stay with Clear and even going to go to GA for a moment. Clear GA TV are going producing 12 podcasts that will air on their channel in March. Uh, Michael O'Connor, their PRO there, who I know very, very well does great work promoting all games in Clare. It's not just the men in the hurling and football he's going to be doing. Three of those 12 guests will be Catherine O'Loughlin. Now, Catherine might be known more for her camogie exploits, but she's also done very well playing football for Fergus Rovers. Bree Deline from the Banner LGFA Club. And Mary Keane, who is Clare's first ever football all-star. So, that'll be taking place in March. Keep an eye out. Congratulations to all the clubs that have been selected, all 25 of you in the One Good Club campaign. Very, very important as well and great to see. And there was four inter-county players during the week uh, there for the launch of that as well. And wish everybody the very, very best of luck. Ladies Football are running a mini fitness series with former Mayo player Catron Sullivan. So if you haven't caught up with that yet, catch up with it now. And I think it's a six-part series. I know Catherine's doing one and Amanda Casey Finnegan from Monaghan is doing another. But look, after the news we've had this week, and it looks like we'll be waiting a bit longer before we get back to playing any matches. I've already done my talk in Sports as Camogie. I'm not doing it again. We all know where we stand. Try and keep yourselves fit, especially now the weather is picking up. And remember last year when... All this lockdown stuff started. We had good weather as well. It was a novelty at the time. It's certainly not now. But, you know, we might as well try and look after ourselves, mind ourselves. And Catherine Sullivan will help to do that. Offaly LGFA have ratified their underage managers for 2021. I won't go through them all now. But best of luck to Lisa Flaherty, Billy O'Connor, Derek Coyne and Helen Watkins, who will be overseeing their minor football team for 2021. Um, news from Carlo uh, retirement of Kathleen and Fran Mullins who have given a lifetime of commitment to GEA and the LGFA in Carlo Kathleen and Fran thank you very much for everything you have done for Carlo a sport full stop in Carlo life in general over all your time I hope you enjoy your retirement no doubt you keep yourselves involved in some shape or form but they have retired from the county executive and we say congratulations and the best of luck to you one I skipped on my notes here I'm just going to go back to if you're doing nothing tonight now this might be worth checking out Boer Boo National School in Cork are having a primary school stable quiz you can get the details on the Cork LGFA Twitter page it's Five euro for a child, twenty euro family. Ten rounds by ten starts at half seven. Will be a bit of fun. Why not get the family together and support a good cause in Borabu National School? Two more um, items to go through before I wrap up. Congratulations to Galway Ladies Football. They launched their new website yesterday, full of club history, details, fixtures, everything you need to know. Uh, so if you're on Galway or anywhere in the country, um, check out Galway LGFA. Dot IE. And finally, it's not too late to sign up for 5K for Roscommon LGFA. They're still taking applications for that. That's going happening throughout the month of March. So just a fiver, get yourself fit, run 5K, do it for Roscommon. Why not? And to finish off on that, taking over the Roscommon LGFA Instagram page today is Amy O'Connor. They've called her a bright young talent. And of course, we know it here in Sports Stars. She is on the Sports Stars football team of the year so if you have any questions for Amy O'Connor well check out Roscommon LGFA's Instagram today and find out what Amy is up to and what she has to say that's all our news later on as mentioned Joanne Doonan for Man All Ireland winner junior player of the year nominee and ex Carlton player will be with me as we look back at an amazing weekend of AFL action last week and look ahead to some of the key matches taking place this weekend no we won't be doing Geelong Cats against Richmond as that game is probably taking place already but we hope you enjoyed it if you have watched it but we'll be looking at the others. But coming up after the break, we are going to announce the Sports Stars Footballer of 2020. We are going to count them down from 25 to 1. And I'll be doing it in the company of four great guests, four members of our team of the year. After the break, I will be joined by Kerry's Kira Murphy, Kildare's Roisin Byrne, Limerick's Amy Ryan and Ross Commons' Jenny Higgins. 
I like listening to sports dads because I like to listen to ladies football and ladies camogie. Now, welcome back. And of course, as you all remember last week, you came out in your droves to support your county players throughout the country as Sports Stars did its first ever football team of the year. And we asked you, our listeners, our followers, to uh, make that decision. And what a decision. You had a great spread of counties across all the grades as well. And I'm delighted to be joined by four of the Sports Stars football team of the year. So first, I want to say hello to Kerry's Kira Murphy. Hi. Uh, to Kildare's Roisin Byrne. Well, how are you? To Limerick's Amy Ryan. Hi. And to Ross Commons, Jenny Higgins. Hi there, and thanks for having me. Thank you to all of you as well. I'll be talking to you all randomly in a moment. What we're going to do over the next 20 minutes, we're going to go through the team of the year that you selected again. Uh, we're going to then start counting down our top 25 players of the year from 25 to 1. And that includes our four guests. And I can tell you that one of these four has been selected by you as our Sports Stars Footballer of the Year for 2020. But they have absolutely no idea. <laughs> So, and now, of course, if somebody did get the pen and paper out and went through all the votes over the three rounds, fair, and we've worked it out, fair play to you. <laughs> Took me a while to do it, even, and I was running the competition the right way through. So, guys, anyway, first I'm going to run through the team again for anybody who hasn't heard it. Now, of course, you will get it on our website, sportsstars.ie. In goal is Shauna Murphy from Fermanagh. Full back line is Katie New from Mead, Neve Gallagher from Mead, and Emma Cronin from Tipperary. Our half back line is Roisin Considine from Clare, centre back Megan Tyne from Mead, and one of our guests carries Kira Murphy as number seven. In midfield, another guest, Jenny Higgins from Roscommon at eight, partnered by Maura O'Shotlamsey from Mead at nine. Our half forward line, Clean and Shea of Carlo at ten, Nasa Dooley from Kildare at eleven, and Amy Mackin from Armagh at twelve. And our inside line includes two guests. We've Amy O'Connor from Roscommon at thirteen, we've Amy Ryan from Limerick at fourteen, and Roisin Byrne from Kildare at 15. Amy, I'll start with yourself. I know it doesn't make up for not winning an All-Ireland Junior Football Championship this year, but for yourself personally, uh, what does it mean that the support you had over the last week and to make this team of the year? Oh, Darren, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I only found out about it was at last Tuesday morning. I woke to loads of texts on my phone. I was like, I had no idea what was going on. And it was just great to, like, you know, get a bit of excitement and entertainment to sell through the week. Like, it really brought people together and, you know, your club mates and your and your county teammates that you can't actually see at the moment, only all on Zoom. And I had aunts and uncles and cousins from all over the world. Like, I was getting votes from everywhere. So, you know, it's great, like, to be, um, you know, picked for this team and to be even nominated was fantastic. Like, because I was the only girl from Limerick. So I was shocked as well. But, um to be nominated with all these fantastic footballers. Do you know, it's a great, um, it's a great honour. I'm absolutely delighted. We're delighted for yourself as well. I watched the semi-final against Fermanagh in particular. We'll talk about that more in a bit, but I'd already marked down on that particular day for a nomination <laughs> and delighted that everybody Limerick and around the country got behind you. We'll talk to everyone <laughs> else in a moment. We're going to start our countdown of the top 25 players and we're doing it in reverse order because why not? Had that bit of suspense as well. And I'll randomly get the other three in as well um, as we're going through it before we get to your own names as well. I'm just marking you down here to make sure I don't skip you when we do it. So, um, number 25 on the Sports Stars Football Player of the Year is Sinead Goldrick from Dublin. It's not often we start a countdown with Sinead <laughs> Goldrick, but that's the way we're doing it here. 24, Marie Keeley from Wicklow. And number 23 is Louise Nimer Hertig from Kerry. Kira, uh, you were, I suppose the court game this year is just playing catch up, but Louise Nimir Hurt Hurtick is a player for Kerry that has been driving you on the last couple of years, and you're very, very close to a breakthrough again at senior level. Yeah, I suppose Louise is a great um, leader on and off the field. Um, she, you know, she's one of the older players, and I suppose just there's a lot of younger players now emerging onto the, the senior team, and you know, just any little bit of encouragement she gives the training, you know, she. You know, spur you on before games, and you know she'd have a little chat too. She's just a brilliant player, and like I'm lucky to to play against, you know, play with her on the team, and it's she's just phenomenal. Like I can't speak highly enough of her, and um, she's just she's just a fantastic player. 
fantastic pair and a great theatre for Kerry. No doubt yourself and herself and many more will continue driving to try and get the kingdom back up to the top of ladies football. That's Louise Nimmerhertig at number 23. 22 is Louise Ward from Galway. And at 21, the first member of the actual team that's in the countdown today is Maura O'Shaughnessy from County Mead. On to the top 20. We're doing a bit of a Mead run here. Stacey mm. Grimes from Mead at number 20. Sarah Wall from Mead at 19. Breaking it up at 18 is Roisin Considine of Clare. 17 from Mead is Neve Gallagher. And number 16 is Megan Tyne. The latter three of those five names, also members of the team. Of course, to just let you know, we'll have all of this up on the website when the podcast is out as well. Number 15 on our countdown is our first person from Kildare and that's Nasa Dooley and Roisin yourself and Nasa are really tearing the lights out in attack this year and I suppose well I will talk more about the leash game in a while you did everything you could in attack to try and get Kildare into the semi-finals yeah Nessa's absolutely unbelievable um, she came in a couple of years ago um, I'm a good bit older than Nessa now uh, so she's kind of the, the the young guns coming through with Kildare but like she's absolutely top quality. Like if you watched her play and you wouldn't be able to tell if she was left or right footed, she's she's unbelievable. Like so it's no surprise people are voting for her and she's in the top fifteen. When I was going through the Kildare players, you were two of the names that I had out there as well. And it just goes to show the two of you making the team, how much uh, people admired the effort she put in this year. And again, we'll talk more about uh, the campaign in a bit. So that's NASA Julie at number 15. So we're getting really exciting into the top 14 now. And we still haven't officially named any of our four there. Yes. Number 14 is Clodagh Fox from Wicklow. 13 is our team goalkeeper, Shauna Murphy from Fermanagh. And 12 is Emma Cronin from Tip and number 11 Emma Troy from Mead see the way I'm rattling through these on to the top 10 we'll be having conversations shortly no doubt now uh, number 10 is Monica McGurk from Mead even though she didn't make the team her, her the votes throughout the tree have her in the top 10 and number 9 is Amy O'Connor from Roscommon and Jenny there's a lot of talk about Amy as a bright spark for the future of Roscommon football yeah, absolutely. Um, Amy is definitely one to watch for the future. She's one of our, our young guns, our young stars. Um, she really came into her own, I think, this year. Um, she was probably new enough to the panel last year, but this year she really um, nailed down that corner forward spot. So, um, yeah, having coached Amy at underage throughout the years, yeah, I, she was she was one to watch from when she was 14. So she's definitely a bright future ahead. There was great excitement about Amy's chances too at the start of this competition. Delighted to see she's in the team at right corner forward. Amy is number nine. Number eight is Keenan Ishe from Carlo. And I'd just like to thank the Carlo Nationals. Did a great write up on the team as well and interviewed Kleena on making it too. She scored two nine and two championship games this year and deservedly makes our team and is number eight on our countdown. It's time to talk to somebody. Number seven. And number seven on the team is Roisin Byrne from Carlo. Kildare. So Roisin, first congratulations on making number seven on the team. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Darren. Roisin, uh, I I don't want to use the term unlucky, but, you know, Kildare in 2020 seemed to do everything right and looked like he'd saved the day against Leash. It must have been deeply frustrating for yourself that he didn't get out with that group because it was looking good at one stage. Uh, I'm still not over it, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, like we'd gone through the whole year without being beaten. Like we were hoping to to go on and do well in the league. Like we'd already made a league final before lockdown. And like we came back, we had a couple of challenge matches. Like we, Claire and us, like have this fierce rivalry. We just always seem to meet them in championship. Like we had them in an All-Ireland final a few years ago. So to get over the line against Claire, it kind of nearly felt like you'd won an All-Ireland in a way. But then... We played Sligo, who I think are in a bit of a transition this year. But then to come against Leash, like we've always said Leash are such a hard team to beat and they're a neighbour of ours. We, we always end up getting them in some sort of a league or in some round of championship. But yeah, we were absolutely gutted. We just started so terribly. And then we had this amazing comeback and we just, we couldn't finish it out. We just, yeah, it was it was a really tough journey home from Carlo now. I, I think if you asked a few of the girls, that definitely still not over, but well, I don't know. We're looking forward to this year now. Hopefully we don't meet Leash early in the year because I don't think we're able for it just yet. 
But I, I get what you're saying too, because like Roshan, you got two late points in that important game against Clare and didn't win Clare had beaten Leash as well. It was looking I know, yeah. It was looking nicely set up. You'd been unbeaten as you made cruelly de- denied a league final. I, I stand yeah. to be corrected, but I think you were the only team in the country that guaranteed a league final place. And then yeah. as you said there, you just you got off to the bad start. Leash got a foothold on the game. He looked like he'd saved it. And then yeah. they got the job done. And all of a sudden, then like I don't think any other team in the championship this year won two games that didn't make a semi-final I know like it was just uh, it was it was gutting and then like we'd be friendly with a few of the Clare girls and you'd see them up on Instagram after they were coming off the pitch after beating Sligo looking at their phones and everyone was celebrating and we were all commiserating at home it was yeah it was a very very hard one to take because it wasn't like you'd lost a semi-final or you'd been knocked out in a quarter-final you were kind of sitting around waiting to look out for results so yeah, it it was kind of it was one of those things where it was in our hands and we just we just couldn't get over the line. So yeah, it was very very hard to take. And then when we saw what happened between Claire and Mead, it must have been even more upsetting because I suppose Mead just clicked in the day. But you'd like to think, from the Claire point of view, that it would have been a much closer contest if he'd been ye playing Mead. Yeah, well, I suppose you look at a team maybe like Down who. We were we actually didn't get to play them in the league at all, but we were a couple of points ahead of them. Our last round of the league would have been against Down. So we kind of would have had ourselves on par with Down and, and Clare. And I think Down ran them close in championship. And then, you know, so we kind of thought if, if we did get over the line, like we're there, thereabouts. Um, I, I don't know what happened to Clare. Like I would have, with, with the team they have, like I would have thought that they would have been a bit closer, but, you know, things happen on the day. But look, Mead are unbelievable. Like I'm glad they're in senior now because <laughs> don't wouldn't want to be playing them. Like their their speed coming out with their half backs is just absolutely immense. Like I went to college with Neve Glogley and uh, she is probably one of the worst people to mark. So I'm just glad I don't have to go through that for another year. <laughs> no doubt, but you of course be aiming to get there as well. Roshin, listen, thanks a million for joining us there. Roshin, uh, left corner forward on our Sports Stars Team of the Year and number seven on our Countdown of Player of the Year. On to the top six. Uh, Katie New from Mead gets the number six pick. And coming in at number five with someone we spoke to at the very top of the show, our full forward from Limerick, Amy Ryan. And first, Amy, congratulations, you're in the top five. Thanks a million, Darren. It's great. Amy, I'd say you probably replay in your head the first quarter against Fermanagh so many times. It was like every three quarters of that Ireland <laughs> semi-final, Limerick did everything right, but unfortunately you give away a four-goal head start. I know, and it was probably our best game of the championship for the other three quarters of the match. It, the first quarter, looking back on it, felt like it went on forever because we just couldn't get a hold of it and they got up. They had such a lead going in um, even after the first water break, not to mind at, at half time, um, we just, it was like we were stuck. We just couldn't get on the scoreboard. We just couldn't stop them. And then they just took their chances when they came and they hit us hard in the first 15 minutes and got a few goals. And we were on the back foot then all the time, which was such a pity because, you know, we had done, we had done so much things right, we'll say in the other three quarters. And it's a pity to start off like that because you're full of regret we met them in the league final in 20, in the league semi final in 2019. Um, and we were up by like 11 points at half time. So we were going in now this time on the back foot. And but we were like, you know, it's possible now, you know, because they turned around. So we were really, you know, we were in a mental state. We were like, look, we can do it. And we just, we, we went hell for leather and we got a few goals back ourselves. And but it was just, it was it was too much of a lead. So it was a pity, but, you know, they're a great team and their goalie on the day, she made the team of the year as well, was absolutely fantastic. So, you know, hats off, they were the best team. Yeah, because I, and I, I know you'd, you'd be tired of hearing people say this, but credit to Limerick for getting back into the match. I particularly sat down to watch the game that day and our pundits here were completely torn between yourselves and for Mana and didn't look like it was over, but like you got two goals yourself, you rallied back into the game, and as you mentioned, if it wasn't for Sean Sean Murphy, uh, you might have made the All Ireland final against Wicklow. Yeah, because when you look back at some of some of the saves, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, you know, maybe like it was they had a bit of luck, but they were like the, her saves were quality saves, like you know, the likes of Katie Me and Katie Healing, um, unbelievable words. 
taking a shot and nobody could score. <laughs> it was just, she was absolutely fantastic. So, um, I mean, when it saves like that, it, you know, as in fair play, you know, she was literally the difference between us that day. Um, if it was a different keeper on a different day, maybe. But um, it was a pity because we have come down from junior in 2019 um, after winning in 18. So it's tough, you know, because we feel like we could, we can be competing maybe in intermediate. So we really, really wanted to get back into a final and just see um, where it took us. But look, overall, I suppose, with new management in for the first year and we got to the semi final. Um, so I suppose that's something to build on then for this year as well going forward. Because I was just going to say that you have, must be confident in your chances this year after the way you rallied against all Ireland champions. And I suppose for outside of Limerick or outside of a junior county where I'd be from, um, the streaming this year is great to see the games. And it's just goes to show how many good teams are playing junior at the moment. And many of them have uh, rightfully have ambitions of competing in intermediates in the near future. Yeah, and there's so little between um, all the teams in, in junior, intermediate and seniors, you know, as in, in their own grades. Um, matches are like always neck and neck same with intermediate and same with senior there's very little between all the grades so yeah we'd be confident enough going in we definitely aim to be um, back in a semi-final anyway please God um, if not even one step further so um, it's fantastic the streaming was unbelievable you know even our club games were streamed all the county matches were streamed for people that couldn't go you know in such a strange year um, and to have record attendances even online um, you know, some, give something to people to talk about. You know, should we be? We would have been lost completely without the sport last year. So hopefully, that definitely does carry forward into the new into this year, um, and that we'll have a league and a championship and something for the supporters to tune into if they can't go. We're certainly looking forward to it as well and we wish you the best of luck in 2021 with Limerick. That is Amy Ryan, our full forward and team of the year and number five in our player of the year. On to the top four, guys. And two of you still waiting. In fourth place is our highest person who didn't make the team, and that is Blahan Mackin from Armagh. Topped the polls in rounds one and two, but just didn't get enough in the final to make the team. And why not keep it in the family? In number uh, number three is our sister, Amy Mackin from Armagh. Amy, who's nominated for Senior Player of the Year in the official uh, team. She is number three with us and our left wing forward. So now it's our top two. They're there. So we have, have to make the announcement. Our number two in our player of the year is Jenny Higgins from Roscommon. Jenny, congratulations. Number two in our countdown of top 25. What a year you've had. First, 101 now appearances for Roscommon. And you must be delighted to reach that landmark. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Jerry. A yeah, huge honour to be to be the, the second Um player in it so um yeah huge honor to achieve 100 games this campaign um I actually didn't even know that you know I was even near that or I wouldn't even count games or anything like that it was it was something our manager came in and he came from a men's background and something that they place huge focus and emphasis on so he had been keeping record I suppose and put a huge effort into it and um yeah it was it was lovely to be acknowledged and honored um in the Offaly game this year. Um, yeah, so we had a great campaign too. It was really memorable championship for us. And I think, you know, even myself and Amy reaching this team and especially for me, I suppose, being the second top um, player here, um, it's definitely a testament to our team and how we got on. And I suppose the support that's within the county for our team as well. And there was great support this year because, and I know I'm probably repeating myself with each interview, but even when you look at the game against Westmead, like credit Westmead, they got the two goals on the day, they got the result, but you probably paid the maximum punishment for two mistakes in the whole match. Yeah, that, that game is a bit like what Roshi was saying there about her clear game. And, you know, it's definitely a bit raw for us yet. And we definitely probably... You know, we do see it as one that got away from us. Um, we probably feel like we probably were the best team on the day. Um, but just, you know, a few mistakes on the day just cost us. But look, that's what that's what it takes when you get to the top top tier. You know, you have to, you can't make mistakes. And, you know, it's even it wasn't just the two goals. I suppose we didn't capitalise on some of our scoring chances. So, um, yeah, look, at the same time, we look back with great hope for the year going forward and to know that we were so close. So it'll give us great hope, I suppose, for the 2021 campaign. And it just brings me to the last question as well, Jenny. I'm like, of course, when you hit a landmark like yourself, you feel obligated to ask this silly question. But I'm assuming we're going to see you out and about again for Ross Common fighting for <laughs> Ireland honours this year. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm thinking about retiring every year, but um, that's the great thing about COVID. It's actually probably helped some of the older players to keep fresh and keep injury free. So I'm feeling pretty good. So yeah, I, I'm going to give it a go for, for 2021 anyway. We're delighted to hear that. I don't know if Roisin will be, but we're all delighted to hear it. <laughs> no, Jenny. I was kind of hoping she'd be making an announcement there. <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> oh, she was building up for the big, the big exclusive. <laughs> but Jenny, listen, we wish you the best luck in 2021. We look forward to talking to you again. And that is Thanks, Jenny Higgins guys. from Ross Common, midfielder in our team of the year and number two in our player of the year. So that brings us to number one. The kingdom came out in force, as did many more around the country as well, for Kira Murphy from Kerry. Kira, first, congratulations. You are the Sports Stars Footballer of the Year. Thanks very much, Darren. It's great to be uh, named as number one in the team of the year. I suppose it's just, it just goes to show, like, you know, the girls that, that are on the team with me, it's, it's them that put you on and make you become that better player, especially when, you know, you're just starting out on the senior team. Um, and it's just, it's, it's great to be involved with such a fantastic team and, you know, the, the new management as well as, you know, spurring us on and pushing us on. And hopefully this year we can go that one step further. And, you know, last year now in the, in the league, we had been going well. But obviously, you know, with um with COVID, we had we had already reached the final, but obviously that was um that that was all scrapped. And then you know, coming up against Cork, we were just maybe came up a bit short. Maybe they had a bit more experience on the day, and I suppose as well, um we we didn't have the rub of the green. There was you know balls in the post and the crossbar, and Saoirse Noonan's goal in the first half in the first few minutes really killed us, and we were kind of playing catch up. Then even though there was only the bare minimum between us at the end. Um, but I suppose it's it's good to play the, the the top teams because that's that's how, you know, if you compete with the best, you become the best and you learn, you know, and hopefully now this year we'll get up to division one because we've we've been up there at the top in division two the last two years and we just we haven't reached the 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 podium yet for division one but hopefully now this year you know we'll get back in in a month or so and um train hard and just hopefully reach that um division two final and get back up to division one because well, Kerry, even as you're saying there too it's been a difficult couple of years for Kerry between the relegation a few bits the whole thing just seemed to go off a little bit but certainly in 2020 Kerry were back as you've touched in the league form already and apologies I should have said you were in the league final as well and as I mentioned earlier on we're talking with Louise if it wasn't for a head start against Cork I know you got back into the game and you got levelling in front who knows what could have happened this year mm-hmm. yeah exactly you know it's, it's hard to know because you know like I said there earlier we we had been going well and we had um, reached the, the final already and just just that little bit that little setback there of you know because we had the momentum going into it and you know obviously we feel that we're good enough to be playing in division one um and the car game was was disappointing um after putting that amount or putting the hard amount of training during the year and even you know when COVID kicked in you know you're still doing your bit by yourself and you know doing the zoom calls and all that um but it was it was also really disappointing all right and like but you know there's only there's there is a lot of young girls coming up so hopefully, you know, we gel together and we can bring that uh, mixture of experience and youth and hopefully get get back to where we want to be. And even before I let you go as well, because as you mentioned, a lot of young players, even yourself, you only played minor three years ago as well. And in all Ireland's under 16 back in 2015. But like defensively too, Kerry were much sharper this year and other years. Now, yes, Sears Noonan got in early and you were playing catch up in that uh, group match as well. And any other year would have been guaranteed a quarter final and opened up doors. But as you're touching on there, there's new blood coming in. You're getting back kind of a stable force as well, which is very, very important for football in the kingdom. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, you know, a new management came in this year now, and I think, you know, we've worked on, I suppose, weaknesses that maybe um, that had been present previous, and definitely kind of the backs was one area. You know, we've obviously, we've great um, leaders up front. Um, you have Louise, and then, you know, you have the middle, middle um, there of Lorraine Scanlon, and, you know, you have more players in, in the back line there of Ashlyn Desmond. And I suppose it's just mixing that bit of, you know, youth into the back line and experience, you know, just, it's, all, it's all about communication really on, on the field. And um, hopefully, you know, with a bit more, another year or two, you know, hopefully we'll be, we'll be going to get into hopefully Co-Park and places like that and um, winning a bit of silverware. 
And Kira, before I let you go, of course, a message, any message you have for all the Kerry supporters and supporters throughout the country that got behind you and made you the Sports Dads Footballer of the Year? Yeah, I suppose obviously, um, like Amy was saying there earlier, it was great to see, you know, your family, your club, everybody get behind you and supporting you. Like it's it's kind of dull enough times at the moment with COVID. So it just kind of gave people a bit of a lift really um, during the week. And like, I had no idea. I woke up in the Monday morning and just had like, you know, seeing messages and, and seeing you know, on Twitter, I looked through Twitter and I was like, people were retreating and stuff. So it was great just to start your Monday morning with a, a bit of uh, hope and excitement and just hopefully, you know, saying as well that, this is this is great and you know, hopefully we get back soon enough on the field and it was just great to, to know that everybody was getting out there and voting for you and you know that sport alone to be alone to be nominated but you know to actually get named on the team team of the year was great as well and it just shows that you know ladies football is kind of it's you know coming maybe like the men's it's it's you know the promotion is great out there um on the ladies football and you know that people are actually getting behind you and it, it's great to see like really well, we're absolutely delighted too. And like even as you mentioned, the excitement too. Of course, being as the organizer neutral, I was getting excited watching the voting. There were so many swings, especially near the end. But Kira, congratulations and again the very, very best of luck to Kerry in 2021. I like listening to Sports Dads because he has famous celebrities and I guess listen to him. Darren Kelly. Now I'm delighted to be joined by Player of the Year nominee, Joanne Doonan, ahead of this weekend. We'll talk about that in a moment. And of course, we're here to preview round five of the AFL Women's Series and a lot of talking points from last week and a lot to look forward to this weekend. But first, Joanne, no award ceremony this year, but no doubt you're excited and looking forward to uh, watching TG Carr on Saturday night. Oh God, yeah, like I suppose it is disappointing that we can't get all dolled up and kind of head to a nice wee ball. But no luck, like you said, it's nice to kind of be nominated and kind of be watching with anticipation. Like, But uh, no, it should be a good show and good to kind of see that it is on TV and uh, broadcasted so the ladies can get the recognition that it deserves, I suppose. So it's brilliant to see. Well, again, on behalf of Sports Stars, we're wishing you the best luck. Not that we have any favourites here, but you could understand why we might be rooting for Joanne <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, Joanne, you didn't make our team with the year. <laughs> it goes to show, I suppose, how fair our segment is. But there was a member of the Fermanagh team on it, and you must be delighted for Shauna Murphy to make the team, and hopefully she might make a double again on Saturday. Yes, exactly. Shauna's definitely well-deserving of, uh, of recognition this year. Like, she's been... Probably one of the standout goalies this year and probably most memorable with her uh, after the All-Ireland speech, which is a bit of a, a crack up with the Santa hat. Like, but Sean is brilliant. <laughs> you know, she is. She's a, a fantastic character and a great girl to have on the team. And she puts in that hard work. And I, I suppose growing up with her, I always played outfield with her and she would have been our midfields um, up even into the minors. Like. Um, so it's, it's definitely an interesting change in the scene that she's kind of, grabbed it with both hands and she's she's fantastic so really really delighted for her yeah but delighted for Shauna too and also for yourself and Emer and hopefully there'll be a few more from Fermanagh to get acknowledged at the weekend as well yeah. let's talk Australia just Joanne when we think we have it sussed we get another <laughs> cracking weekend and first I'll apologise to all fans of Greater Western Sydney for completely writing them off last week <laughs> I know I know I know like literally you couldn't you honestly couldn't write this whole whole weekend like and I think I don't know whether Giants just got I don't know definitely after we the fix that weekend because it just came out flying and I think we'll probably touch on it later but like when you see Core Shotton scoring four goals like it's just it's phenomenal and it was a fantastic performance from them as a team you see that they just kind of their spirits kept lifting as the game went on like and they just kind of kept piling on that pressure but no it's fantastic yeah it was a great game of course, we are going to take credit here because Cora has been on the Fair Green and Sports Stars before. And so I, I'm assuming she's listening to the podcast. She played it for the team and uh, it riled them up for a big result. And of course, if you if we take our Irish hats off, it wasn't even the biggest result of the weekend because we had Collingwood, which got a really turning it on there, four wins in a row. And you thought there might be a chance here, the Western Bulldogs getting a big win against the Demons. I know, like, what, like, one, I can't believe, the, I suppose, how well Connie did against North. And just to be, 
like to keep them like sco- well I suppose they got behinds I know they were, I think it was eight behinds that North Melbourne got like and to you know keep a team of that calibre to you know no goals and I suppose North will be looking back thinking they missed chances and I suppose they did in a way but oh my god like again um, massive performance from Collingwood and I suppose I think it's them um, made history they haven't won four games in a row so um, it's brilliant to see and I think it's well deserved you know they are gelling really well as a as a, a unit and you can kind of tell that they're just kind of propelling on and on in this competition and definitely think they're definitely one to watch out for and likewise Western Bulldogs have just completely I think shocked the whole kind of a conference this year like and especially that win over Melbourne like I know I suppose like I think it's nine behinds that North, uh, that Melbourne Demons had but again they'll be kicking themselves for missing them chances but you can't say that it wasn't without you know the pressure from Western Bulldogs and the literally the tenacity of them like round the midfield like the like the hunger of them and they were celebrating every goal as if they were literally winning a final like so it's lovely to see, I have to say, like, and it's like you said, it makes it definitely for an interesting competition. It certainly does. We've only got two teams on four out of four at the moment. And that is the Fremantle Dockers and Collingwood. We'll be talking more about them later on. And I suppose, Joanne, before we go on to our moments of the week, um, like we four teams who've lost four matches. It's going to be very hard to see Richmond, West or Gold Coast or Geelong getting back into the race. But it would take a brave person to bet heavy money on what six are going to come out of the other ten. Yeah, I definitely think like the table is definitely fluctuating each week. And like you said, even our predictions, you were kind of like some of the games you could kind of be thinking I would go either way. But then, like you said, there's been some shocks that has completely through the points. And I suppose that kind of top six is so close that, you know, one game here or there, one slip up. And like you said, because it's week after week, you don't have a lot of time to kind of regroup and kind of get, get back up and get back at it. Like, so you literally have to take each game as it comes and kind of keep trying to produce the goods and I suppose any team that did kind of lose uh, surprisingly at the weekend just has to kind of shake it off and get back out and like you said just get any points they can because you see how vital it is to kind of get up and not uh, the last four. We have five scheduled rounds left and it's looking good that we'll get the nine rounds and we'll talk about fixtures and possible double ups in a while. If you want the results in round four, including highlights and the, the ladder, I, I have to correct myself here, the ladder, uh, check out sportsstyles.ie. They're all up on that. Joanne, last weekend, your moment of the week. My moment would probably, and it's linked to probably my player of the week as well, but that goal that Cora got that everybody was still looking for the ball and it was behind the, <laughs> behind the post. I just think I had to replay it a few times before I kind of figured out where she even came out of to get the goal. Like, But I just thought it was, a, it was a great highlight of the week and kind of just topped off her fantastic performance. Yes, we're doing spoilers at the moment, but we hold we hold you in suspense for a moment. I don't think there's going to be any surprises what either who either was are picking this week. But uh, as even Cora said herself, using her kidding football skills to full effect and making a massive impact. Uh, a few contenders for game of the week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Even between Carlton and Richmond was a lot closer than I had figured. And watching it back, it was actually very contending. And Richmond were playing very good link up football, which is great to see. And they're definitely improving for being a new team. Like they're definitely, I think, coming on a lot more than them uh, teams that have, or the other teams, sorry, that have come into the system. But likewise as well, the Brisbane game, very close. And, you know, could have went either way as well. And it was just fantastic kind of back and forth I suppose you know it was brilliant to see that they kind of held them um, nearly scoreless to the second quarter like so um, again brilliant football to be watching yeah Indeed, of course, Brisbane's up for a loss to Adelaide. I forgot to mention him at the start as well, just adding to the, the intrigue of last week. When you mentioned Carlton and Richmond, I, as we have often say now, we don't get up at 10 past two or 10 past four in the morning, but but we do try our best to get as many of them in. So I was getting up for Fremantle and Gold Coast and I was up a bit in early and getting the coffee and settling down. And I put on, the sco- I put on Carlton and Richmond. I couldn't realise how close it was and I was just glued to it yeah. I got no prep though for the other two games done because I was completely glued but I really enjoyed the intrigue the chess match there I say Collingwood the way they not just beat North Melbourne but they snuffed them out as well it, it definitely made a statement of their potential for possibly later in the season Yeah I think Collingwood especially when playing them last year they're very tactically minded and they will have their research done on you know the other teams kind of kingpins like and even though North have a lot of them, like the the same, they kind of have really good matchups, and you know, even I suppose interchange kind of, 
you know, there's rotations and stuff between the forwards and the mids and stuff, but they just linked up so well. And even the running plays of some of the forwards and even like Ash Sheridan's goal, like just kind of reading that breaking ball and ground ball, let's call it over there, to just even get a quick foot and get a kick away at it was brilliant to see. Like, so yeah, they're definitely in for a shout this year. On four there, now one or two more wins and they could be there. Player of the week? Any, any, <laughs> are, we build, are we building this up or do we know... <laughs> I think you can't on the lively give it to Cora after the performance she had at the weekend. You know, not even the goals. You know, she was everywhere in the field. She had a massive impact. Like, and um, I have to say the likes of Orla and even Ash Mack again for even coming off. She scored so well. So I think they're definitely worth of a of a mention uh, in their games. But yeah, I think this week definitely Cora Salton is uh, my player of the week. I'm not going to hold up my book because I think you know I'm agreeing with you this <laughs> week anyway. Cora getting two points. But yes, uh, despite defeat, Orla O'Dwyer getting many plaudits for her performance. Ash Mack, as you mentioned too. And Neve McAvoy had a good run out with the Demons. Yeah. And Sarah Rowe as well, consistent as always. They're just some. And also, great to see Lauren McGee uh, finally yeah. get to make her debut and hopefully she can build on that. Yeah, Daphne, it's great. I think even Neve, I think, again, kind of contender for moments of the week, like one of her tackles turned it over inside 50, you know, when he got a shot at goal was fantastic to see. And I suppose her efforts being rewarded. She definitely had an influential game from Melbourne at the weekend. Um, and like you said, brilliant to see Lauren get her first run out. It's it's tough, and especially when you're in mid-season and coming away a game like that, I suppose uh, it'll be hard for them. But again, hopefully we see Goldie back this week and they kind of push on again for the Demons. Yeah, there's another point as well. We didn't mention that Sinead Goldrick missed out uh, due to a concussion last week too. And of course, that would have had a big effect on the Melbourne Demons in that game. Round five kicks off on f- Friday this week. Geelong against Richmond. Of course, Sports Stats Football is actually going out later this week. So this game will actually have been played. But Joanne doesn't know the winner at the moment. Now, it's not one of our two featured games, Joanne. But just very quickly, because this game will have been played by the time the podcast goes out, who do you think will win between Geelong and Richmond? I'd probably put my, sorry, my money on Richmond, just even how they kind of stood up to Carlton. I definitely think that they're, uh, you know, they're not going to lie down. And just the way G Long haven't been going too well, you know, I think it'd be very hard for them to kind of make a big shock to the system. So I'd probably say Richmond for that one. Richmond to finally get that long awaited win. That's the prediction mm-hmm. of Joanne. And of course, if you're listening to the podcast and you know the results, as we've stated already, we've recorded this interview before the game took place. Well, we will be looking forward to is two big games at the weekend. Well, as many games we're looking forward to, but the two we're focusing on uh, on Saturday at 10 past six in the morning, Irish time, Fremantle Dockers against the Brisbane Lions. I'm really, really looking forward to this game. Fremantle are on an 11 game winning streak. They can't seem to kick a goal straight half the time. They probably have a record for behinds for a winning team. Uh, but they're getting the job done. They're picking up the big wins. They did it against Adelaide recently too. They'll go in as favourites against the Brisbane Lions team that uh, I suppose were surprised to have suffered a home defeat in their last game. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, I suppose... Brisbane kind of had that tough opponents like the likes of Aaron Phillips played fantastic for Adelaide at the weekend again similar to course scored four goals you know so she's a very hard woman and can be very influential for her team you know so she's having a very good day it can be very hard to get that team stopped but I do think there's a lot more Brisbane can offer you know they they are very strong and they can I suppose turn it around uh, and like you said the game was very close so it probably could have went either way but I suppose when you look at Frio they beat Adelaide quite comfortably, you know, but at the same time, they have had, you know, Adelaide's probably the toughest opponents they have played so far. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, because it'll probably be a, an even matchup, I would say, at the minute, um, to see how either of them would fare out. So I'd say it could be in for a very good game this weekend. Like, so, um, but you'd kind of think that the way for you are going at the minute, you'd be kind of favouring them, but hopefully it'll be a good one to watch. I'd say it will be too because of course we've talked about Orla O'Dwyer already and really having an impact with Brisbane now and Greta Bodie seems to be one of the top players in that team. Kira Bowers is really um, taking this season by storm at the moment for her performances for Fremantle and she's got a great support act as well and of course one more win for Fremantle and they're not mathematically there but they won't be far away from securing their spot. Yeah, I definitely think it. And I think there's probably a point to prove. I know they were probably one of the teams that was frustrated last year when it was getting cut down to the finals because, like you said, they were playing so well. And I suppose they kind of thought that was their year for them to win it. So 
I'll say, and I think a lot of the team has kind of stayed on from last year to kind of kind of push push that on one step further this year. And um, I don't think, or I, I think it'll take a lot to stop them, kind of, and especially when the momentum's with them. Uh, especially, like I said, inside 50, their pressure is outrageous and it's really good to see. And like you said, they, they do get a lot of behinds, but you'd be kind of conscious about how many I suppose, scoring opportunities they do get. And, you know, on a good day, they could get them all to be goals. Like, so they're definitely the interest up front. Yeah, it's just going to show that if they really, really do click, which call everybody else, better watch out. Uh, Joanne, we get a lot of questions in here from listeners. And of course, if I went through them all every week, we'd be here for two hours. But <laughs> one or two that have come up as well. And one is Victoria has had its borders closed to an awful lot of neighbouring states recently. We've had the Melbourne clubs playing each other. And like, for example, another example there, Fremantle and Brisbane coast to coast matches as well. There is the possibility of double ups in the remaining few rounds um due to obviously COVID-19 scares and all that. Now, there's signs that borders are opening up for some, like New South Wales and Queensland in the next week or so as well. But how much of a factor could that have in the competition if, for example, Fremantle end up having to play West Coast again or, or Brisbane Gold Coast, for example, or something like that? I think it's a hard one to call because obviously you just want games and you'd, you'd prefer to get any game as opposed to no games because of COVID, I suppose. But... Like that, you know, if you're playing the same team again and I suppose maybe you look at the likes of maybe uh, Fremantle and West Coast and kind of think that that's a bit of an unfair advantage. And you, I suppose I know coming from personal experience that you'd prefer to play everybody and I suppose say that you're the best as opposed to, you know, think you got to the top just because you were playing maybe weaker teams or, you know, you already played a team. So, you know, both of you have the, you know, intel on each other and you can kind of, I suppose, not make the same mistakes that you might have made the first time that you've come up against each other. So it probably is a tricky one. But again, I, I think, look, it's good that they're kind of thinking of any possibility to allow the season to go ahead. And I think the girls will just be kind of happy enough to play the football. But it'll be interesting now to see what way it might affect the, the leaderboard if it does go to that. We'll be monitoring that over the next couple of rounds because we should be more clear by round six exactly what is going on there as well. But as I mentioned, Fremantle and Brisbane and many other teams who have been going coast to coast at the moment, but it is slowly opening up, not to Western Australia yet, it must be mentioned. So we're not going to see Fremantle and West Coast against any of the Melbourne teams at the moment, but we'll see how that pans out. Going back to Fremantle and Brisbane, uh, prediction, are Fremantle going to make it a perfect dozen or are Brisbane going to buy back? I'd love to say Brisbane for order's sake, but I feel like Freo might just edge this one again. I think they're going to be very hard to stop this year. Fremantle to continue the run going and of course there's the build up that winning habit they look good contenders so Joanne and Fremantle the nod we talked about outside Melbourne let's go into Melbourne 10 past morning on Sunday we won't make any commitments yet I don't think Joanne will be getting up at 10 past 4 Sunday morning if things go well Saturday night <laughs> but, if you, but if you do <laughs> uh, this is going to be a very very uh, great game Collingwood against Melbourne Demons we've already talked about how Collingwood are on their own winning stretch and have beaten the Kangaroos what well, way to add to that by trying to beat the Demons but who hopefully will have goalie back yeah, yeah, hopefully we'll see the likes of goalie back. And I'm, I'm not too sure. I know um, I think Sarah may have like hurt her shoulder again towards the end of the last game. So hopefully she'll be fit to play again with no issues this week. So um, I definitely think it could be interesting. Like I said, Melbourne coming after that loss last week, I think they'll have a lot to rectify and a lot to prove to themselves. And I just realised here, sorry, it was 12 behinds, in fact, that they had got last week. Um, so they definitely want to be a lot more clinical with them in the Ford 50, but again, I think Hollywood are kind of showing their true colours here and that they're, they're gritting their teeth and they're gelling really, really well together and they just look like a team that's just the confidence is growing every week and I think that belief is there that, you know what, you know, maybe we can go on with the streak. Like, so I think Melbourne will have to come out and I suppose it's always kind of hard to come out after a win, but you can either go either way, you know, use it to motivate you or kind of drop the head. So, I can't imagine them kind of laying over too easy. Um, and like I said, this game could have a big impact then on the ladder as I suppose them two teams are very close in it. And um, it will be interesting to kind of see, I suppose, how it pans out. But again, I, I get in a very hard to call this one, I think, this week. 
<laughs> I'll give you another moment or so. But even at the, as you touched on there at the start of the campaign, we would have had the demons down as top three or four contenders for the title anyway. Collingwood were making progress in 2020 before the shutdown happened, and they're really showing the progress they're making this year. Brianna Davy, uh, 31 disposals last week. What a year she's having! But of course, on the Irish side of things too, um, personal disposals still gets underrated. Sp- like five goals in four matches. Ashley mm-hmm. Sheridan. Yeah, I think she finally, like I said last week, like she's getting the recognition she deserves and you heard the commentators talk about her X Factor. like, And I think even one of them said, you know, that she'd be nearly ranked and one of the top 15 players in the comp at the minute, which is a fantastic compliment and, you know, as well deserving too. Like, so again, seeing more like that and more danger in there. Like, and I know it's definitely exciting, even when you're sitting in the opposite change rooms and they're going through the opposition teams and an Irish girl comes up to see that they're, you know, getting the same recognition as some of the uh, Australian girls for their, you know, ability to play. So um, I definitely think they'll be, you know, pinpointed now. And I suppose, like I said, given that bit more respect that they will need to start man marking them. And um, so it's just, yeah, it's it's brilliant to see. But again, I, I think, I suppose, it, it, I might tip, I feel like I'll tip, probably calling with this week I just think they're going to be very hard to stop and I'm hoping again it's definitely going to be one of them games that I'll be waking up and catching up first thing because uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see how it goes Sinead Goldrick probably listening to this at the moment making notes but <laughs> As no different to me asking about Brisbane's ability to bounce back, you've tipped Collingwood, but is there pressure on Melbourne because after the loss last week, they're up against a team that at the start of the year they would have been expected to beat. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. the case now, and Collingwood might probably come into this game as slight favourites. So, is there an argument to suggest this, there's more pressure on Melbourne this week than maybe on Brisbane? Yeah, I probably would say that Brisbane has definitely a kind of higher percentage on the ladder as well, that they might be kind of overly stressed about as much as Melbourne might be and like you said to kind of suffer such a loss like at least Brisbane were quite close there so I think there's definitely a lot more to prove from last week Melbourne do but again I think they'll be kicking themselves in a way that you know it was a lot of their own errors you know so it, it'd be different if they're looking and thinking they played their best performance and still lost to, um, to them so I think they will be kind of coming out and I suppose if any, if, if you even chat the Dublin girls, you know, they're very competitive as it is. So I can imagine the Melbourne girls being similar. So I'd say they'd be happy enough to be that team that kind of kills the Collingwood streak. Like, so um, they probably use that pressure as motivation as opposed to kind of, you know, hiding away. So um, it'll definitely be interesting to see. I'm tempted for 10 past four on Sunday morning. As you mentioned, it's a game that makes you think, but without a shadow of a doubt, as soon as the morning coffee is in our hands on Sunday morning, we'll be glued to that game in some shape or form. Joanne is going for Fremantle and for Collingwood to continue their 100% records. We've already tipped Richmond. If you just in case you're listening now, we're aware that game has taken place this morning. Let's look at the other four games. And of course, a game that carries such big significance now. Who do you think between the Bulldogs and the Giants? Yeah, I feel like I suppose Giants are coming after two big wins. Like and uh, like I said, their confidence kind of building up a wee bit more now. But I feel like West and Bulldogs are are looking fiery and like even their their belief, you can kind of see them all. Like I said, there's the way they're celebrating and they're I suppose there's a lot of the girls that even was there last year and the previous year. So I think they're just finally starting to believe in their ability and they're kind of gelling really well together and even I think it's for Simmons up front. She played with us last year as an add-on. Actually, she was just on VFL with uh, Carlton. And I know she's a fantastic player and she's just added so much up front for them. So uh, I would probably, probably going to go with Western Bulldogs in this one, to be honest. Bulldogs getting the nod there. A game at Tempa State we'll both be watching. And of course, it's a big one now for the Kangaroos after two losses against the Carlton team that we were uh, t- tipping nicely last week. Yeah, like I said, we were talking about Carlton maybe being a, a dark horse. Um, but I'm just have seen that Maddie Pasaskis, the the sanction is held. So she's actually missing this game, which will be a massive loss for Carlton. You know, she's one of our main players. She was uh, the player of the year last year, you know, best and fairest. So I definitely think it should be kind of hard to replace around midfield for Carlton. And especially when North Melbourne have such a strong midfield. Oh, again, it'd be very tough. I'm kind of hoping uh, North Melbourne come out and kind of prove themselves because there's a lot of good players. And I, in my opinion, I suppose you don't deserve it if you're not playing well, but they have a lot of players that I do think that they're deserving of a win at some time soon. They just need to kind of get that 
going for them. So um, I'm probably going to tip North Melbourne. I don't think they're going to let lay over for another week. Like So they'll definitely be working on what they can improve. No, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if North Melbourne can come back because I think a lot of us were surprised by how Collingwood dismantled them last week after they finished strongly against the Demons as well. Um, Adelaide against St Kilda, 10 past two on Sunday. Uh, yeah, St Kilda were also playing very well. It was unfortunate that last week for them, but uh, I think Adelaide are kind of getting in the swing of things again. I think like the likes of Chelsea Randall and uh, even Aaron Phillips are just kind of starting to take leadership again and uh, hopefully we'll see Eilish back as well but uh, I would say Adelaide for this one this week well, Certainly we do hope to see Eilish back she didn't play last week either and finally West Coast against Gold Coast are West Coast finally going to get this win? I, I would like to think so i definitely uh, tip West Coast over that again uh, I know Ash had to come off the last game with a, with a pain in her knee but hopefully she'll be back and ready to go um, this weekend but You'd like to think, I think, that West Coast, again, it could be a good game, but Suns haven't been playing well at all. And I suppose West Coast has shown a lot more potential. So I'll tip West Coast for this one. West Coast getting the nod. And just as we mentioned, Ashley McCarthy as well, we can let you confirm now here in Sports Desk that Ashley McCarthy is going to be our guest next week on the Fair Green. Mm-hmm. So we're looking forward to talking to Ashley about West Coast Eagles, Tipperary Football, and Kayer Kamogi, the fifth anniversary since she captained Kayer to an All Ireland Club Kamogi title in Crow Park. So looking forward to that one as well. Joanne, before we let you go, and of course, as I mentioned, there's lots of topics to discuss here, and we'll get to them over the next couple of weeks. But of course, this is also the Indigenous round in the AFL Women's this year and of course a very very important round just like we spoke a few weeks ago with the Pride Yeah 100% and I think like I said similar to the Pride it's it's just more all about accepting and I suppose recognising the history um, which I learned so much about and even the likes of Australia Day I think we see a lot of Irish celebrating and we probably don't even know what we're technically celebrating over there so it was brilliant to kind of get an insight to that kind of culture and history and I suppose uh, um I suppose involvement of everybody and um, everybody's included. So, you know, it'd be similar, I suppose, to rural Ireland that, you know, especially in the outback of Australia, it's just kind of making um, footy, uh, I suppose, accessible to everybody in them areas and I suppose an actual proper pathway for, you know, kids growing up in them areas. And it's just fantastic, I suppose, to see them recognising, I suppose, their ancestors and the history of Australia. And it's kind of, it shows true. There's definitely a lot of pride and a, a lot of players, you know, take great, great pride in this round. And I suppose it was a privilege to be involved in. But um, yeah, it's definitely an important round for everybody. And that was Joanne Doonan joining me there to look ahead to all the AFL women's action this weekend. One game already taking place today. There's three on Saturday, three on Sunday and the ladder will be looking much more clear. And again, one last time, I'd like to wish Joanne the very, very best of luck at the AIG TG Car teams of the championship tomorrow evening. Also, we'd like to thank our guest from earlier on, our new footballer of the year, Kerry's Kira Murphy and also those that made the top seven with her Ross Commons, Jenny Higgins Limerick's Amy Ryan and Kildare's Roisin Byrne if you haven't checked it out already check out our chat during the week with Dublin's Lindsay Davey and our Maz Amy Mackin who is also on the Sports Stars team of the year well worth a check out it's only a short podcast as well plenty of time to get that in and we will be back again next week with Sports Stars football plenty going on as mentioned on the fair green we'll have Ashley McCarthy we look back at the official teams of the championship on Sports Stars football next Next week and much more besides so stay with us for all your ladies football news and goings on with that being said hope you enjoyed the show i'm darren kelly and this was sports Stars football